So here we have our first graph, our exponential graph, and these have a curve to them. And I want you to think about this as like an airplane taking off, right? When you think about an airplane taking off, it doesn't just kind of like lift off the ground like a helicopter, and it doesn't just like shoot off in a diagonal line. It kind of has a slow, gradual buildup, and then if you've ever ridden a plane before, it increases in height rather quickly. So this is a great way to think about an exponential curve, where it starts on the ground, and then it moves you know, ever so slightly along the ground and picks up speed and picks up speed and then whew, finally the airplane is able to take flight because of the graph, um, because of the difference between the airspeed and the power required, all right? And so we fly until we want to maybe land. So let's think about this as a landing. So we're coming in for our landing. We're reducing our speed. We got our flaps up. And again, this is a nice gradual, hopefully safe landing where we kind of gradually curve down to the ground, never going below the ground. Same thing with exponential functions, never below the ground um, in terms of never going below the x-axis. Always a slight curve up or a slight curve down, whether that's increasing here and getting close to the ground and then in going up, or whether it's decreasing coming from a higher point and then going to a lower point. So airplanes make nice exponential curves. Now, as for your linear graphs, think about more in terms of a car speeding up. So in this case, the car probably starts at zero and then accelerates. Now, it doesn't have to accelerate at a constant speed, but let's just pretend for sake that this is a constant increase. Now, that constant increase can mean that the car can keep getting faster, but it's increasing at the same amount. All right. And then for a decreasing function, let's have it start at a faster speed, and then it hits the brakes, and it decreases at the same amount. And in both of these cases, it creates a straight line because the speed is exactly the same. Next slide has uh, a little bit of a discussion about when it's increasing and decreasing in terms of its equation. So our exponential graphs, again, look like this and our linear graphs look like y equals mx plus b. So, how do we know when it's increasing or decreasing just on the b value? Well, when the b value is greater than 1, it's increasing, okay? So that's going to cause things to go up because you're multiplying by a number bigger than 1. Just think about any time you multiply by a number bigger than 1. Let's say, for instance, the number is 5, and we multiply that by 2, now we get 10. Or if we take 5 and multiply it by, I don't know, maybe 2.5, okay? Well, that's going to give us 12.5. It's going to make the number bigger, okay? So multiplying by a number larger than 1 is going to cause this to increase. Now, it's going to cause it to decrease when the number is between in terms of when it's decreasing, right? So decreasing when it's between 0 and 1. So let's take that same 5 and multiply it by, I don't know, let's say just 1 half, right? So half of that is going to cause it to be 2.5. And if I thought about something else, um, let's say if I did 5 times, I'm going to keep it simple here, 1 fifth of a number. So 1 fifth is greater than 0, just slightly, but smaller than 1, and that would just give us 1. So if you start at 5 and multiply by half, you get 2.5. Start at 5 and multiply by 1.5, you will just get 1. So decreasing when that B value is between 0 and 1. Now what causes linear graphs to increase and decrease? It's all about the M value. It's all about the slope, right? So when the slope is greater than 0, or when it's positive, right? When that number is positive, it increases. But when that m value is less than 0, anything that's smaller than 0 must be negative. And there you have it. It's going down as it goes to the right.